Ever wondered how to animate L systems using Manum GL? Stay tuned, I've got you covered. In a recent video, I animated a line drawing of an approximation of the Hilbert curve. The Hilbert curve can be shown here. This particular animation is one of a series where I'm animating various line drawings of famous space filling curves such as this one. This one, however, was inspired by the Talking Mass in Public website where they have an animation generation collaboration challenge going on. And for the month of August and September, the goal was to try to animate a Hilbert curve or at least an approximation of the Hilbert curve. So for mine, I decided to use the classic idea known as an L system. In the previous video, I talked a little bit more about it. So here I'm just gonna show the Wikipedia site. And right here are the rules that we're gonna to use to produce this Lindenmeyer system or L system. We're gonna construct a long sequence using the alphabet A, B, F, plus and minus. We're gonna start with the letter A and then we have a variety of produ production rules. We'll code up these production rules, we'll take it out to a certain number of steps, and then we'll see if the animation is correct. Uh, so let's dive right in and see how it works. As you can see here, I've opened up a Python blank file. Essentially, I already have the class name and the construct of itself. To really implement a L system, the first thing that I want to do is I want to define a recursive building sequence that's going to build uh, the sequence of instructions for how to walk on the plane. I'm going to call it HL for Hilbert L. Um, again, as we saw, the production rules for the Hilbert curve, you start with just A. So I'm going to put the string A um, as my first element, and that would be my level zero uh, Hilbert curve right there. Uh, now I can basically recursively build a this sequence. Um, I'm going to do that with a for loop and I'm going to do for i in range uh, n. Uh, so n is the parameter that I'm going to feed it. That will be how many levels of the Hilbert curve that I want. Then what I'm going to do is at that particular instance I am going to append a blank list at t and then um, I am going to go through all of the variables x in t sub i so again, the index is i, so when i is zero, I'll start it with this particular sequence, um, and then it will build up. Uh, then I have some cases. Again, the L system for the Hilbert curve has five instances, but three of them are the same. So the first one says, if x is the string a, um, then we're gonna do something pretty complicated. Um, we're gonna replace a with this string here, plus b f, minus a uh, f uh, a and then minus f b and plus so we go through and in our new list we take t i plus one which is this blank list as of right now and we're gonna append z so what we've done here is every time we see an A in our list, we're gonna go through all of these characters and append that to our brand new list. Um, similarly, if X is B, we have a nearly identical rule. So I'm gonna copy and paste this. The production rule there says that you're supposed to replace B with minus A, F, plus, plus, and then B, F, B, plus, and then F, A, minus. So if I've done this correctly, these two production rules should be fairly similar. The F should be in the same place, and then pluses should be re replaced by minuses, Bs by As, and so on. Um, and then there are two, three other characters, sorry. There's the plus, the F, and the A. And according to the production rules, we just leave those the same. So that's a pretty easy rule to build our sequence. Uh, otherwise, we take our new sequence that we're building and we uh, just reappend whatever the X is that we have. 
So again, if we have an A, we're going to replace it with all of these characters. If we have a B, we're going to replace it with all of these characters. And if we have anything else, we just replace it with itself. Um, so that is our particular uh, recursive building. And again, we just want the very last thing that we build. So we're going to do this for n total uh, turns in the for loop here. And then when we're done at the very end, uh, we're going to return t of minus 1. So this returns the last list in this list of lists t, and it should be fairly big. So that's really the complicated part, uh, coding up the L system. The rest of it's pretty straightforward in Manum. Uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is because the Hilbert curve gets pretty big pretty quickly, I'm going to start with a level. And I'm going to start with just level 4. Um, in the animation, I drew a level 8, but it took me nearly uh, you know, 20 hours to render it. So I don't want to do that here uh, while live streaming this uh, coding. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the sequence. And uh, I'm going to build the sequence Hilbert L system of L. So again, if I were to change this to 5, it'll build a more complicated one. And we'll, we'll try that maybe a little bit later uh, to make sure this works. The next thing that I need to do is I need to start with an initial line segment. Um, I'm just going to call it initial. And it's a line segment. And um, for me, it's just going to be a unit length, length one line segment. Um, I want to make it a little bit thicker so I can see it. So I'm going to set the width, uh, set the stroke, sorry, set the stroke, and I'm going to set the width equal to 12 for now. The default width is 4. Um, I think this is going to be a decently big Hilbert curve, so I want it to be thicker so that I can see it. Um, and then I'm going to start building my Hilbert curve using the rules of the L system. So I'm going to call this Hilbert curve, and it's just going to start with the initial line segment. Um, I'm going to start with an angle of 0, and that's because in the L system, sometimes we're going to have to rotate, and we're going to keep track of the angle, um, and we'll rotate along the way. Uh, then what I'm going to do is 4i in uh, the range of the length of the sequence. So I'm going to walk through the whole sequence. And basically, if the sequence value is a f, uh, we're going to consider that a step forward. But what we want to do is we need to figure out where we are. So we're going to start, we're going to build a coordinate, which is the Hilbert curve, the previous line segment, and we're going to get the end of it. That way we start at the end of the previous line segment. Now I'm going to build a temporary line. That temporary line is a line. It's going to start at the coordinate, the end of the last line segment that I built in the Hilbert curve. And it's just going to take that and it's going to step uh, one unit forward in the x direction. Um, once again, I'm going to set the stroke uh, width equal to 12 just so it matches and doesn't get any thinner along the way. Um, now that would always build a straight line uh, going out horizontally because of this. Um, so what I need to do next is I need to rotate it um, if necessary. So this is where I keep track of the angle. Uh, I'm going to rotate it to the angle and I'm going to do that about uh, the coordinate so that if it was supposed to rotate at all, um, it would have rotated right now the appropriate angle. So the question is, how does it know to rotate? Well, that should have been happening if there were other instructions along the way. Um, one of those instructions is if the element in the sequence is the plus sign, uh, then we're supposed to increment the angle plus equals uh, pi over 2. We're supposed to rotate 90 degrees. Uh, Another one that can happen is a minus symbol, and that would be a minus pi over 2 rotation. Um, now, this is three of the characters, the plus, the f, and the minus. Uh, so the f's up here. That's a step forward after doing appropriate rotations. The plus is, ro is rotate the angle by pi over 2, and the minus is rotate the angle by minus pi over 2. And basically, um, the a and the b instructions are ignored, so I don't even have to put them in here. So uh, there is one thing that I missed. I built that curve, but I forgot to add it to the list. So I want to append that temporary line to the Hilbert curve. Again, that's important because right here, notice I'm calling the last entry in the Hilbert curve list. If I don't add a new line to that, it'll just keep calling this original Hilbert curve and it'll never build anything big. Um, so that's how you build one of these uh, systems based on the instructions. So again, the long sequence here is a bunch of instructions and I've walked through that sequence and I've built the curve along the way by taking a step forward and rotating appropriate angles for appropriate instructions. Um, now I want to just create this as an, as an object. 
So I'll just call it uh, H curve for Hilbert curve. And it's going to be a V group. And it's going to be a group of all the things, all those lines that are in the Hilbert curve. So I list out, this asterisk lists out all the things in the Hilbert curve list, which is quite big now, and puts them all together into a V group. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, but I, I like having the V group because then I can just call a few simple things that I need to do. The first thing that I want to do is, I don't exactly know how big this curve is, so um, I'm going to make the camera, self.camera.frame, I'm going to set the height, um, you can set the width too, but I think I want to set the height here. Uh, to the Hilbert curve get height. So because it's an ob a V group, it has its own height. Um, I need a little extra space, so I'll multiply that by, I don't know, 1.3 maybe is a good scale factor. Um, next, I want to make sure that the camera, that frame is moved to the Hilbert curve. So I can move to uh, H curve. And again, you can actually do this in one single line. You can do these two things together, but I like separating them right now just so that I can see them. And then that's basically it. The only thing left for me to do, and hopefully to see it work, uh, is to draw the curve. And so I'm using ManimGL, so the command is show creation uh, curve. Uh, H curve, sorry. H curve is what I called it. Um, it turns out I don't really want to draw this initial line segment. Um, so to do that, I just start at one and draw the whole thing. Um, I want to draw this kind of slow so I can watch it happen. I don't exactly know a good amount of time right now, so I'll run time. I'll put in 15 seconds for now, and then we'll put a wait at the end just to be safe. Okay, so I think we've done it all now, and I didn't even try to render it once, so there might be some errors. So let's just go over to the terminal. Um, I'm already loaded up, and uh, I will run ManimGL. This is called Hilbert Turtle uh, because I think of it as Turtle Graphics. And if we run it, we'll see if we have any errors. And we got lucky so far. And let's see. Oh, there we go. So there we go. It's, it's drawing out the Hilbert curve shape as we expected. And again, because I set the level to four, this is going to be a level four Hilbert curve. It's not super big and it should finish drawing right there. Oh, very nice. Uh, sort of perfect. Um, again, like I said, I think we can go one level higher now. And all I did was change level four to level five. I haven't changed anything else, um, but it should be quite a bit bigger of a curve now. Uh, didn't take that long to load, but now we watch it. You can see uh, it's much slower drawing, but it is going to draw sort of this whole thing right here. Um, and this is a level five Hilbert curve. And it didn't take that much time for it to do this one. Wouldn't take it that much time to render. Um, like I said, in the animation that I showed in the video, um, I used a height of eight, I believe. And it took quite a long time to build the Hilbert curve uh, in, the, in this for loop. Uh, in this for loop, I think, right? Build the, build the Hilbert curve. And then it took a bunch of time to build this particular V group full of the Hilbert curve. And it took a decent amount of time to actually render this drawing. Um, now this drawing is happening in 15 seconds. It's obviously taking much longer than that uh, in my rendering window. But if I were to render it um, by writing to a file, uh, it would work out pretty nicely. So that was a quick, short, easy one uh, to do. Uh, it turns out you can do any L systems this way. Um, and on my channel, you can find a variety of other L systems that I did basically with the same exact code. I have the Sierpinski curve. I have the Hilbert curve as we have here. Um, I drew the uh, Levy, Levy C curve. I drew the Coke snowflake doing something like this. So there's a lot of cool curves that you can draw. And ManMGL makes it quite nice because you put those instructions in here. This is a bit of a slow recursive process. Um, and then you just build the object just like the L system says, where you take line segments, rotate them appropriate angles, and stick them together. And then all you have to do is a few lines to make it run. And essentially the only play line is right here where I'm saying, let's show the creation of this cool curve that I built bit by bit. I hope you learned a little something uh, about ManimGL from this or about how to animate L systems. And maybe you can explore and figure out a couple of your own. Uh, as always, I want to thank the uh, organizers over at the Talking Mess in Public website. Um, they're doing a really cool thing here, having people animate various things uh, using various techniques. And I've learned a lot by watching those videos. So I recommend you head over there, check out the playlist, and I hope that this inspires you to try some animations yourself. So I'll end the video with the level five animation we built in this tutorial. If you want to see the level eight, 
check the link in the description or head over to my channel and watch a few other ones. Thanks for your support and thanks for watching.